back with moto number two. The a lot, David Bailey, as we get set for moto number two now. After winning at Jeremy McGrath, let's see what he can do with the whole shot here. And it's Emick, Jeff Emick. Here's our leader right now out of the box, Jeff Emick. And he's got a Kawasaki teammate right behind him before Jeremy McGrath has a chance. Trying to pull up on the Kawasaki's. When that first lap, Emick was gone. He had a pretty good lead. Now uh, they've closed back up. I think Hughes feels the pressure from... Here comes Jeremy. Moving into second place. Can he hold on to it? Great bar-to-bar -bar battle. It looked like they kind of locked elbows there. Make a statement in the 250 class. Right now, the crowd is anticipating now. How fast can Jeremy catch up with Jeff Emmy? And as they went over the jump, they both sort of steered away from each other, but that was close. Emick number one, Jeremy McGrath number two as Jeremy has his sights on the number two bike right now. And look at that, a golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> you know to Jeremy, before this lap, would you own him? Well, yeah, he feels pretty confident right now, and their lap times are uh, three, almost four seconds faster. Jeff, I'm not sure if he didn't seem like he could hold on the first moto, and pace being up, uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can hold on. Jeremy's strong. He knows he can run this pace the whole 30 cups. Skip Norfolk never to loss for words, David. No, he's always got the good response, and, and he's smart. You know, it's a good team. These guys, any place on the racetrack where it's really that much faster than Emig. Emig's going to have to make a mistake. He made a little one right there. Still not enough. He had enough power to come from the outside and seal off Jeremy. He came up short there. We saw Hughes bottom out there uh, and pull it off. I mean, if, if he crashed there, he must have came up way short and. Uh, you know, he, we know how many injuries he's had to those arms, and they have to take a beating on an impact like that. Back out in front, it's Emig number two, and Jeremy McGrath number one. And Jeremy unable to really show him a wheel yet as they come over the finish line jump. Now McGrath is going to pull out everything he can. And what I was beginning to say on that strategy is that if McGrath moves around Emig right now, that gives Emig a chance to retaliate. And he will, believe me. And if McGrath thinks he's faster somewhere on the racetrack, he might be smart to save that till the last lap and not give Emig a chance. My neck for 30 minutes, and it's no fun. McGrath trying to use the inside to get up that elevator jump. Oh, that gives Emig a big advantage. Emig able to double. I mean, he's always in the lead after the first couple of laps. Look how clean Emig is. Emig really accelerating through there. Breaks hard to take the tight turn. McGrath is not having an easy time of it staying up with him, especially if he doesn't take the double on the L. You know, when you do that, the momentum is all yours. And if he loses this here today, that momentum, it, it's only one race, Art, but uh, that's all it takes for that momentum to shift. And he's got to get around Emig to keep that. Right here is a crucial. You now he jumps it, so he's going to stay in contact. But still, kind of gets stuck out there on that outside line. So he loses a little bit of time, he, regardless of the fact that he still jumped that. Panic's looking on just crossing his fingers that's about all he can do there's nothing mechanic can do now that bike's gonna hold up McGrath okay. though putting the pressure on this is breathtaking for the fans to see this duel all the way race long Emmy making the move McGrath's mechanic Skip Norfolk and he's with Davey Skip it seems like every time Jeremy gets close enough to take a shot at Jeff something happens either he doesn't do the uphill jump or Emmick moves over on him yeah, well, he's, he's trying to inside line back here on that, what they call the elevator, I guess, and it's pretty hard and slick, and you just got to commit, and uh, I hope he's trying to set him up for something in there, so, you know, it's way past the halfway, we're down to three laps left, he's got to make it happen now, or it's not going to. Close, if not closer, uh, for any hopes at all, at pushing him again to a mistake. Over the finish line jump, it's boom, boom, it's that close, and here comes Jeremy McGrath to the inside, but Emig, just enough steam to take into that first turn out in front. He cuts inside, McGrath goes wide. It's looking like bar to bar, McGrath makes the pass! Oh, with less than two laps remaining. And Emig comes back, Emig hits him and goes down! So Jeremy McGrath is handed a gift. And uh, now, boy, what a relief. Emig gets going, he's got some things bent on his bike. But uh, I think they got enough of a lead over Hughes where he'll be able to hang on to second place. But there's uh, Jeff Stan and a couple of fans. McGrath on a day that's not muddy. Got to be a great feeling, about 50 yards to go to the finish. Up the hill, he can see the checkered flag waving as he crosses the finish line. Jeremy McGrath, his seventh straight moto win, if you go back to last year. Congratulations on another Gatorback win. This is your second year in the row in 250 class in the third of your career, right? Yeah, I think so. I won one here on 125. So, yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, that was a long, hard fight in the second moto between Jeff and I and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I guess when push came to shove, I was out in front. <laughs> and so the undefeated season goes on. 
Yeah, it's good so far. I want to take it on into next week. We have Daytona, and uh, if I ride this strong in Daytona, I'll be really happy. Congratulations, Jeremy. Thanks a lot. It's like for 30 minutes, you had him right where you want him. What happened? Um, you know, this turnout here by the start, I, you know, I was riding the inside, and, uh, you know, I wasn't the fastest up in this section. And Jeremy was really fast, you know, through the upper section. And when I came through my usual berm there on the inside, it was all blown out, and it kind of, you know, I kind of lost all my drive coming out of the turn, and then that's when uh, McGrath got on the outside of me there. And what about in the next corner when you fell? Well, the next corner, you know, I went to get him back you know, right away, and, and um, I mean, you know, I looked, just lost traction on the rear end, I guess. I mean, basically, that's all that happened. These conditions don't want to wait as Jeremy McGrath found out in Moto 1. The gate is down. We are away. Doug Henry on number 15. McGrath with a great start. There you see him on the red number one bike and he's got all of the early leaders from Moto 1 right there with him. And Jeremy rode right around the outside of him. Now here comes Emig. Riding that back wheel. Number two. Jeff Emig takes the lead. Doug Henry right there. He too goes around Jeremy McGrath who bobbled coming down the hill. And this is where he got his first one last year. Right now, he's looking at the lead. If he can pick it up, depending on how these guys finish behind him, he could mathematically win the overall. And look at Jeremy McGrath back in fifth place once again. Lead Al Holbert, a five-time IMSA Camel GT champion. He looked at Doug Henry right there. But this skirmish between Mike LaRocco and his Suzuki teammate Greg Albertine. Really starting to pour it on. LaRocco goes by Henry for second. Can Henry respond? Oh, and Albertine is down. Up the inside, couldn't get it done. Dives behind Henry, then goes up the inside in this corner and takes away third place. So McGrath on a charge. Well, Jeremy McGrath has certainly left himself with some work to do after a fifth place finish in Moto 1. He is up to third spot right now behind the man on the right, right there, number eight, Mike LaRocco. Jeremy doing a beautiful job of getting over that triple jump. He came out of that corner before it on the inside. Get some help from slower riders or perhaps someone else. Moving up from behind, contact, and Emig is off the course. Wow, Morocco got in there and just punted Emig. It looked like Emig grabbed the Morocco did a good job to set that up, and now here comes Jeremy. Two-way battle for the lead between Morocco and McGrath. You see Emig held on to third place. Fortunately, didn't get tangled in that tape along the edge of the course. And now I'm going to go. This is what Jeremy McGrath needed, but he needed Emick to drop further back in the top five. Right now he's got LaRocco ahead of him and Emick behind him. And now he has LaRocco behind him. Jeremy got a strong drive out of the corner at the bottom of the hill. Working now. Jeremy McGrath out front. And if you'd like more about how to get the most out of your motorcycle, here's Jeremy's help. If LaRocco stays where he is, he has the advantage for the overall. The way it looks for Jeremy right now, though, isn't too bad. Winning the second moto kind of put an exclamation on things. If he can hang on to it, he wouldn't lose that totally many. Totally unpressed for the lead. In fact, I don't think we have any particular battles going on right now. The question is, where will everyone finish in the overall? Well, he's just got to keep his fingers crossed that the, the cards fall in the right places and he can pick up the overall win. That'd be uh, just about impossible with LaRocco and Emick where they are. Uh, it could... It's, it's just about a three-way tie for the lead, but if things stay the way they are, it looks like Emig may pick it up. Emig, of course, uh, beating LaRocco in this moto. If he can stay there, they'll both have a second and a third, but Emig's better finish in the second moto will break that tie. They'll both only pick up a point on the day of Jeremy McGrath out of his points lead. So for Jeremy, uh, having that bad first moto didn't turn out too bad in the end because he's going to win the second moto. And uh, he's only going to lose a point in the championship. So not that one's safe. It could be a good year for Doug in the outdoors. Well, with no one behind him but a lapped rider, a little twist of the front wheel for the fans, to the checkered flag comes Jeremy McGrath. You heard him say earlier, you have to put together two good photos. In the next event at Southwick now. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Will it be Jeremy McGrath or, again, number two? Oh, my goodness, Emig with another great start. But Jeremy's right there. You see 13. Up front in most of the first moto, looking good. Here he's in contact with the leaders. Nobody between them. He'll be able to uh, see everything that they're doing. Look at all the water splashing out of that. Oh. It's one of the off cambers, and all that water runs down in there. Something tells me Jeremy's not going to put up with that splashing. Lower before they get up to speed, and that berm forms right next to the tire. Looked like he just tried to put on his brakes and make a shoot right out of there. Yeah, well, it's hard to stay in that berm. He overshot a little bit, but it's the kind of corner where you can pull in the clutch and skid it in there and uh, not lose that much time. Jeremy, like this second moto, 
You begin to wonder right about now when and where Jeremy's going to make his move. He went up on the lawn. <laughs> Look at that. He's just looking for anywhere to miss those bumps and to stay out of that ruse. There's no ruse from Jer from uh, Emmett going into that corner, but Jeremy just getting creative. I mean, this race and others worked out every day. Jeremy McGrath kind of split it up the middle. He took some time off at uh, Lake Havasu for some uh, boating and skiing and, and also did some riding. Well, he says he needs that. And is Jeremy Albright telling Emick, pull away, come on, focus. But already Jeremy down the inside cuts him right off. Here comes Emick back again. Can he hold on? Emick on the outside. Jeremy's got the edge. And Jeremy McGrath, once again, early in the race, taking over the lead. Thanks, but he's able to do that kind of stuff and get away with it. Emick, on the other hand, with an outside line, had to choose a ride he didn't really like, got a lot of height, and uh, lost some momentum to Jeremy. Emick not letting McGrath off the hook like he did in the first moto, but he just never had the great opportunity to make a pass. If you now the difficulty of a 30 minute moto through the heat of summer plus two laps as adverse to a supercross. Oh, well, supercross is, I'll tell you what, at the end of this race, uh, he's really not having to dig very deep. I mean, he's probably, the breeze feels nice as he comes out of some of those uh, shaded areas, and he's not really having to put a lot of effort into this. He's just loving every minute of it, and knows that uh, he's put a few more points on his points lead. Oh, says it all. Looked like a private code as he put up his uh, fist there in the air. The checkers and the neck neck for Jeremy McGrath. The starting line, I'm sure he's shared all that with Jeremy. And once again, we'll see if Jeremy gets the whole shot. He got the whole shot in the first moto. The gate is dropped, and uh, Emmy with a pretty good start. Swink with a good start. Jeremy McGrath is right there, number one out in front. Whoa, Emmy jumps in front of him. Looked like Jeff went out of his way to make sure he cut across in front of Jeremy. Just did it again right there, and Jeremy hates that. I can tell you, he hates it. And that'll motivate him to get around Emig and just run away and hide. Emig, McGrath, in that order. Last year, he just kind of lost his concentration. His lines weren't coming together. He made a lot of mistakes. And then he recovered with uh, a few guys making it easier for him by crashing to take the overall. These, and it's Jeremy McGrath trailing Jeff Emig. Emig doing a good job holding out in front. But now Jeremy has picked up the pace a little bit. Looks like he's looking for spots. Accelerating through the sand. Harder than that, but uh, to see how it happens today, I think of the two, Jeremy's probably in better shape. Boy, as the second moto is well underway, it's it's amazing the way they go through that finish line stretch and all of those ruts and the fishtailing that goes on and still maintain some type of control. Different to configurations for a, a track like this. Well, typically you just use more what they call a sand tire, just a lot of space between the knobs, and you don't have any problems. There's no rocks. Uh, just in that one corner, the only corner of the whole racetrack, you usually miss those if you ride a good line. I don't know if I'd be looking for rocks, though, going that fast. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised, because you're cruising baseball. It's, they, they dig up throughout the day. They do a good job to pick them up. That one corner always digs them up. If you hit one, you'll know it. Places like Unadilla, it's put people out for the season. Uh, Mike Kudrowski, I remember one year, broke the back of his hand with a flying rock. Yeah, these don't fly. They just stay there, and when you hit them, you... Do you really want it? He's trying to get him to focus out front. Uh, Jeremy wants it. He's patient, though. Very patient. Jeremy McGrath, side by side. Who gives way? Jeremy gets the best line through the squeeze. Well, he positioned that way back. It is toughness. I think so, too. I mean, it, this is one of the roughest tracks of the season. And the way he hopped over that bump right there, I mean, he's just saving himself so much energy by riding smarter line that rut as you're climbing the hill. Here's Jeremy McGrath. It's been a long time since we checked in with Jeremy on the final lap, though. We'll pick him up as he's had a ride in the park on Sunday. You can see a section on the other side of the racetrack going the other way. There's four berms going around the corner. It's just like a rut, really. But it appears he's even going to greater heights in the sport, the tougher sport of motocross. A tired Jeremy McGrath, I'm sure, even though it was an easy victory as he comes over, Skip Norfolk as mechanic. Way to do it, 1-1. One, one. Well, uh, I had to follow him for a while there. He got inside of me on the start. I had a good start, but I think I faded a little wide. And uh, shoot, he was tough. You know, I, I couldn't get around him for a while. I was checking his lines and making sure I had a couple lines. You know, I had one line that I thought was a little bit quicker, and that's where I tried to press and get really close to him and eventually go by him. 
So now you've won on the hard stuff, you won on the dry stuff, you win in the sand. What's it going to take to beat you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a great time, and uh, I don't know. I think it's confusing some of these guys out there. So, I mean, Skip and I are working really hard in Honda, and, uh, you know, we do what we need to do during the week and come out and put a show on on the, on the weekend. All right. Well, congratulations on your fifth win this year. Thank you. You had him there for a while. What happened? I uh, just uh, basically just wasn't going fast enough, I think. Uh, you know, Kawasaki and Bridgestone, they you know, gave us a great bike again today. And, uh, you know, I had a real terrible first moto, and I really wanted to win the second moto. But I just I just didn't have the speed, I guess. I I mean, you know, I can't really blame it on anything else, you know, except for myself. you got something to smile about. That was a huge distraction for Greg Albertine, too, having to chase that banner around. You know, it's like stepping on the back of somebody's shoe and giving them a flat. <laughs> moto 2, they're revving up, ready to go. Let's see if Emmett could get another hole shot. He sure has put the traction down to get him recently. The chase to the first turn, and guess who? Number two, Emmy. To change behind those two, it'll come out Larry Ward, number six. Hughes, a good start. Number five, just to the left of Ward, and that's Albertine to the right, number 16. Right away, Jeremy not following, electing to take this a little different line than Emmick everywhere. He wants to show him a wheel, and he wants to keep Emmick guessing. His line with Jeremy McGrath, anxious to take the lead early, and does so to the inside. It looks like Emick's going to lose another spot, too. Albertine sneaks around, follows Jeremy around. Emick not going to give it up, though. They're still banging. Look at they get stuck. Oh. It looks like Albertine has taken over second. Yes, he has. Team Suzuki number 16, Greg Albertine. Larry Ward in third. Mid-pack number 13, Phil Lawrence, a privateer. Not too bad of a start for LaRocco. At least he can see the leaders. They all seem to be running about the same pace in the early laps. Now look at all the time. He oh, looks, oh, and Jeremy McGrath went down. This changes the whole complexion of things. Albertine is our new leader. Well, the complexion has certainly changed as Jeremy McGrath tried to come back now on Greg Albertine. To the right, Jeremy McGrath in the jump section. Makes things look a little easy, even though he jammed that last one. Looks back to see where Greg Albertine is. He knows he's got enough breathing room right there. And, you know, it's amazing the resolve Jeremy has to Coming out. Jeremy McGrath leading our motor number two for the 250s at Kenworthy. Can't keep a good man down. Every time he has a bad moto, he comes right back to win the next one or get the overall or both. And uh, it's just been amazing. He's won a moto, I guess, right? As every single race this season, he's at least won a moto there. Today, it looks like he's going to get the overall to boot. This would be his sixth overall victory on the season. It's consecutive overalls before Mount Morris of this year. He won three straight this season, of course, but took a third at Mount Morris with a 5-1. Didn't take him long to get back, though, with two wins. And then two second-place overalls before this race here, which would give him another overall victory. That was pretty slick, too. He came over that jump there just before a little stair step uh, uphill thing he has today, and it's, he's still going to lose points to Jeremy, who had a real lackadaisical first moto, in his own words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non-motivated. And it looked like he was such as he came across the finish line with the checkered flag waving. Jeremy looks back, gives the thumbs up to the interview area, so Marty doesn't have to walk too far. Kind of a mini fist pump. I was going to tease you and, and say you'll do anything to get out of those mid-race uh, interviews, but uh, looking at the, your ankle and listening to your voice, the fall that you took in practice, uh, you're not in really great shape, are you? No, not really. Friday after, you know, during practice, there's about probably six lap or something. There's a jump up there that I, I apparently, I thought I could make it up, and uh, I just didn't. I cased it right in the face of the tabletop, and, and uh, actually, I didn't even crash. My voice is kind of bad right now because I hit my crossbar on my throat, my voice box, and I couldn't even talk when I first did it, so it's a lot better. But but uh, the severe thing is my ankle. It's um, I have what they call a midfoot sprain, and supposedly it's supposed to be more painful than a broken foot. From Marty. All right, the last minute update on Jeremy McGrath. I pointed my thumbs up to him, and he sort of shook his head sort of questioningly. He says the tape job right before he went out was the best it had felt, but uh, we'll have to wait and see whether he's going to be able to go. Requiring reconstructive knee surgery is Jeremy McGrath. You see, even though he's dominated, only has a 47-point lead on Jeff Emig. Mike LaRocco and Greg Albertine fighting it out. Phil, Minnesota, what a beautiful day it is for racing.
Not too humid this time around. And the start, Jeff Emig with a great start, number two. There's Albertine, number 16, right at his left side. Albertine Henry, number 15, moving into second place now as they start to hit the bumpy area. I mean, he wants this title bad. He's willing to dig deep because his bike was bent up pretty bad. He still finished that motor respectively. Right now, teammate Brian Hughes is not cutting him any slack, David. Uh, Hughes just as hungry, I think. He wants to win bad before the season closes out. I mean, he had the whole season really taken away from him with that back of his pants. I don't know if that holds true for that moment. <laughs> Here's Jeremy McGrath still in 11th place, of course. If you just tuned in, Jeremy was injured in practice earlier. He cased a jump, hit his neck on the handlebars, and injured his left foot. So just like LaRocco, Jeremy out there riding in a lot of pain. And it's a good thing he has such good timing because he's going to have to absorb uh, the blow, especially this whoop section with his right leg. And that's going to get tired towards the end of the moto. In 11th right now with about five laps to go. Yeah, he's uh, he's right behind Taylor. Actually, I just heard on the radio he just got by Taylor. So that's going to put him in 10th. So that's what we came here for. He's got a lot of pain in his eyes when he comes by. He's, sh he's shaking his head. He's hurting, I believe. So uh, we're going to catch him when he comes off the bike, ice it down, and next go from there boy the complexion of a season can change so rapidly in this game because injuries are a part of motocross it's sprinkling a little bit and just in case it would have gotten a lot worse that's what you would need to keep your vision clear just like when you watch car racing and they move that film across the camera to clear the vision same thing for the rider you yank that string a couple of times and you get clean vision and of course on this track you could get sandblasted absolutely especially if they can win uh this season a little more leverage so the longer he holds on to that contract the more money he'll probably get an easy victory at the end for jeff emig ryan hughes in second black LaRocco, jimmy button Phil. well the only time jeremy mcgrath has been out of this transporter was during the first moto you can see the end result the ice pack back on the foot courageous run i mean you know in fact wes mccoy said the one thing you had never done in your career was ride hurt. You just did it. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to uh, have the type of attitude that, that I'm not a quitter, you know. And, uh, I mean, if I can score ninth or 10th in the next moto, hey, that's that's 24 points that uh, Jeff's not going to gain on me. And, and that's what I want to do, you know. I don't want to quit. What he must accomplish in these two motos. Uh, because if he were not to ride, Jeff Emig mathematically could take over the points lead, especially if he wins this moto. Jeff Emig again, the whole shot. There's Jimmy Button 100, another good performance. Jeremy McGrath, a much better start, though, in about fifth position on the inside there. Remember, he told us he wants to stay out of trouble. That means getting out in front. Henry in second, Button in third. Yeah, I'll just stay where he's at, and maybe these guys will make mistakes, but I don't think he's going to take any chances or push extra hard to pass him. He'll just stay where he's at. David, have you ever lost a title because of injuries? Well, it's, it's hard to say if I lost the title for sure or not. 1985 in the 500 Nationals against Brock, we both had injuries, but uh, yeah, it, it cost me a title, I think. He had... We've had so many passes back and forth. Jeremy McGrath in fourth position, and Jimmy Button wants that spot. Jimmy Button to the inside. He's going to get around, and it's a weird play. Oh, look at Jeremy. Has a better line through the corner, but going wide right there, he's going to give it up. He's looking for the smoothest line everywhere. In practice prior to the race, his worst moto finish since the third race of last year. A ninth place finish in moto number one. And he's just trying to save some points here today. Well, he's going to try to pick up all those points. An extra three may make the difference in the end. The checkered flag for Jeff Emig, his first sweep of the season. He's done everything else. I don't see why not. Oh, I'm telling you, quite an effort for Jeremy McGrath. Our hats are off to him as well as our winner, Jeff Emmy. Snake bite, yeah. Does this one make up for a lot of those? It sure does. Uh, you know, what can I say? The Kawasaki with Bridgestone tires was, uh, I mean, it was great today, especially off the start. So, you know, that was a big key. I didn't want to get dirty all day, you know. And, uh, you know, we lucked out and the rain held off and everything really worked out for me today. I'm real, real, real happy, you know, for me and my and my team. I got to admit, it's about the cleanest I've ever seen anybody. I mean, you led wire to wire both motos and picked up another 11 points. Well, that's good. You know, the, you know, like we said before, the points is good and all, you know, but it's I still make a lot of money when I win these races. And that's what I'm after. Jeremy McGrath leads by only 23 points. We're going to have a battle down to the end, David. I think so, and I think what Jeremy proved to everyone is that he can ride injured. He did it in both motos, salvaged some points. I know that I can win, and I think everyone else does. You know, it's just a matter of being injured. It's one of those things. You know, I, I tried probably a 
stupid thing, you know, at Millville and tried to jump up on that tabletop and come up short and felt like my darn foot fell off. So, uh, you know, I've been on the on the recovery for the last two weeks. I've been to the doctor every day at, uh, you know, Dr. Toy. He's been doing a great job with my foot. And, you know, it's it's just a matter of time. There's only so much you can do. I've noticed a whole lot of intensity in the fans and everybody's all, you know, you can do it, you can get them and all this. I mean, you know, all that's fine and dandy, and I am down a few points. And it, it, I mean, like if I was, you know, one or two points behind, then it would be, you know, something that we were really thinking about. But, but right now we're just thinking about winning. Washington. Jeremy getting out of the gate pretty well. Greg Albertine also, but it is number two. Who else but Jeff Emig, the whole shot king this year, getting into the top position early. Let anybody get up the inside of him, especially with Jeremy back there. Jeremy's in second place as he passes Kyle Lewis, number 11. This is Lewis is one of his favorite tracks, really, after a third overall last year, his best finish in the Nationals on the 250. He's so quick in the early laps, he's obviously gotten out of the gate strong. But look at the little bit of a lead he's already got now over Jeremy. A lot wider weight. It's important to get out there. They didn't lose a lot of speed, but you can see he's affected by it. Albertine shows him a wheel going into that tight corner. And a get off now for McGrath. Looked to me like Albertine just forced him to go a little bit wide there, Jeremy Lee, and he's riding aggressive. LaRocco to the outside, gets the edge on Jeremy McGrath going through the left-hander. You can see how slick it was, too, coming out of that corner. He gassed it early in the burn. Probably be able to get around, too, which Jeremy knows. He's doing the math in his head. He knows he's going to lose a lot of points. Here comes Hughes. Easy pass of the whoops. So you know something's bothering Jeremy on that left foot. In fact, you can tell the different styles when they take left turns together. Get in there and maybe pick up an overall win. Bradshaw on the outside has an easy time of it. Jeremy tries to cut back in, but just doesn't have that power and the angle. There's the difference. Now you can really get an idea of how physical this sport is. It takes so much strength. You have to be so healthy. If he can ever get rid of him, uh, towards the end of the race, he's got a little bit of time to look over there and read what they put on the board. They will let him know uh, the point situation and where Jeremy is, and that'll, that'll help him feel a little bit better out there. Albertine being a real pest for Jeff Emig right now, who has bigger and better things on his mind, like a championship for the 250 class. As long as he holds his line, doesn't make any mistakes, he's going fast right now. Now he sees uh, his friend Ryan helping out Jeff Emig, his teammate. He has to do it. Jeremy doesn't want it to happen. Oh, Jeremy McGrath in the same corner. That left-handed turn goes down again. Goes Phil Lawrence, the lap rider there. Brian Swink goes around. Larry Ward, he's going to lose a lot of position. He's got a balance on that injured foot while he's trying to start the motorcycle. So. Has moved up to third because of that accident. The last turn through the whoops for Jeff Emmy. He has his mind set on his sixth moto win of the year. And if Jeremy McGrath stays in the current position he's in, that would cut the lead to 11 points. Break too, Walt, so they don't roll into the game. Just, just to uh, make sure that you don't wheelie coming off the line. Skip Norfolk very quiet now uh, giving his last minute instructions to Jeremy McGrath as the 32nd board goes sideways and we're off. Photo number two. Emig not that great a start. Oh, we've got a new man out front. It is Rich Taylor number 48. Amaradio number 30. Henry make up for that 11th in the first moto, but looking at LaRocco and where he's positioned, if you look back behind him, there's Emig. Larry Ward in second place. Out in front, Doug Henry, Mike LaRocco, Emig, McGrath, and Amaradio, your order. Well, the heavy favorites, LaRocco, Emig, McGrath, all right there. They're starting to work their way up quick. LaRocco on the inside line. He's shaping up to be a great race. <laughs> Here in Washougal, Jeff Emig has already cut Jeremy McGrath's lead in the points race down to 11 after the first moto. He's got a good opportunity. Oh, Jeremy McGrath, who had moved up to fifth place, has gone down, and he doesn't look in good shape, David. Well, he's already limping on that bad foot. He's torn the boot buckle loose on his left on his left boot. I think that's just a slippery area right there, and it's kind of a little plateau as you're making that left-hand turn. And Oh, he looks stiff and sore right now. Slowing down toward the mechanics area. Uh-oh. The McGrath went into those backwoods in fifth place, the points leader. 
emerging a rather battle. It looks like Jeremy's decided to pack it in here in the second row. This might cost him the championship. If they make can move up and get 25 more points, it's going to give him a 12 point lead. Going last four moves, we're going to try and get a word with uh, either West McCoy or if we can't skip Norfolk as soon as we get a chance. Okay, and he's out of the race, Davey. West, we just saw your eye pulling the pits. Any anything? He just came in. Uh, he obviously crashed back in the wood section, and he's got dirt on his shoulder and his leg, and he's holding his shoulder. So he says he's hurt. He's going back to the truck. Right, Done no, for the day. Right, but the ankle, no further damage then. No, no problems with the ankle or and his finger that he injured earlier in the first moto. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be a problem. He seems to be hurt. I mean, he's never been hurt like this before. So we're going to run back there and take a look. A miracle that's got him back on the track. Anybody that's ever had any kind of a serious injury or back injury or that kind of an operation, and to see what Doug's done is a real inspiration. Boy, without McGrath in this lineup, this is incredible racing. The four riders going for the win here in moto number two at Washougal. And a battle for second place is on now behind Henry as LaRocco really challenging Larry Ward. Shake out, hoping these guys will go down. He won't have to pass them. LaRocco making the move on the inside is in second place now. Well, don't write it down for too long. Don't put it in ink. It's going to change, I have a feeling. And Amick up that long up. Well, it was just, uh, I don't know, just bad luck today, you know. Um, felt like my foot was a little bit better. Second mile, I was riding a little better. And went up that jump right behind Amick, and I hit neutral. So, you know, I went over on my head and smashed my hip and kind of made my leg a little bit sore again. So, you know, by, that, by the time I got up, I was getting up really slow. And, I just kind of pulled off. Up over the hill behind us, it sounds like LaRocco and Henry are holding off that make. Uh, it sounds like in points, you guys might be within about half dozen, 10 points. How do you feel about the next two weeks? Well, I just need to rest a couple more days and then, uh, you know, come back at Binghamton real strong. And I'm going to try and, you know, ride a little bit this week and, and uh, try and get everything going again. And then, and then uh, you know, try and come out at Binghamton with 1-1. One -one. You know, this is serious. He has Nothing he can do about it. The points lead might be taken away from him while he's sidelined. Meanwhile, out in front, Mike LaRocco edges in front of Henry momentarily going into those trees. Oh, my goodness. Bar to bar. These two battling it out for the lead. What great racing action we've had all afternoon, but this has got to top them all. I've never seen anything quite that close. They're fourth gear wide open up that hill. Jeremy McGrath, and the first time I can remember Jeremy McGrath pulling off the track. Mike LaRocco still with an earshot in case Henry should go down, but it's coming down to the final turn right now for Doug Henry. What a moment for this young man from Massachusetts. He's pumped. Look at him. He is so happy. The whole Yamaha crew, even some of the other teams, look like they're happy for Doug. Henry, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back. <laughs> it's been a year, a couple months since the injury. You finally got a win. How's it feeling? It feels really good. It was real tough out there. I mean, I got a good start. A couple guys fell in front of me, and I kind of inherited the lead and just kind of tried to ride my own race. It's something I haven't really done. You know, this whole season was trying to put everybody else aside and just focus on what I need to do. And uh, I worked with a, a guy, Jim Delzer, this week to kind of help me out with focusing on what I need to do. And, you know, that's what I really been needing to do. And I, I just hope I can keep that, you know, that focus. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. So the first moto win in a comeback year has got to set a great tone for next season for Doug Henry. Congratulations. Finally got a win on the Suzuki. Yeah, it was a long time coming. Uh, last few weeks I've been feeling better, a lot better on my bike. But, uh, you know, I had a little shoulder injury at Melville. But bike's been working good. And uh, I'd like to got that win tonight. But Doug, uh, he was all over the place. I couldn't get around him. Yeah. That was just an amazing battle with Doug Henry. Yeah, he put up a good fight. I was wanting to get around him because uh, I don't like winning with second, but, you know, I'll start off that way and hopefully take it from there. Six points behind Jeremy McGrath. Now you got the points, Steve. How's that make you feel? Oh, I didn't know that. It makes me feel pretty good, I guess. Um, you know, there's still a couple races left, and it's still, you know, it's still up for grabs. I'm still going to have to win the motos, you know, to win a championship. So, but, uh, I mean, I've been, I've been down that many points before. It always seems like... You know, every time I'm in a championship race, it happens, you know, in the last couple of races, it makes it real exciting for the fans. So, but I'm real happy, you know, uh, you know it's okay. I really would have liked to have won today, but uh, I'll work hard this week and uh, try to get it the next couple of weeks. Only real Thanks. bad moto for Emma came at Unadilla when he crashed, leading the moto and bent his bike. No worse than a third place throughout the last 11 events for Emmick and the gate drops. We're underway. Moto number one. Let's see who gets the whole shot. 
It is Jeremy McGrath on the inside, number one. Emmy Albertine, Warden LaRocco, all in the fight here. David Bailey, you think, well, Jeremy McGrath has got the whole shot now. There's no way he'll crack under the pressure. He's got the speed to just take away and go for the victory. Jeff Emmick behind him, though, now has that confidence that he has seen Jeremy McGrath not at his best. Well, the odds are against Jeremy right now. First of all, he's injured. Jean Michel Bale, certainly one of the most technically beautiful riders that we've seen in Supercross and Motocross. And here's one of the best that ever lived on the track right now, leading our first moto. Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Emig, Mike Morocco, the top. In the points lead, he was just chasing. So, uh, you know, I don't feel any pressure. I just want to get out there and ride. Last week was a disaster, and uh, I feel 100% better this week. And you can tell it on the track right now, David Bailey, is Jeremy McGrath out in front of moto number one, came into this race eight points down in the championship. We're really starting to open up a lead now over third place. Emick applying the pressure to McGrath. Looked like Jeremy, for most of the moto, had a comfortable lead, wasn't that worried, but you can hear the crowd now. Jeremy knows Emick is right there. Let's you get right in there and hopefully take advantage of a of an unfortunate situation for the leader, but Jeremy's not going to give this one away. It's, it's going to have to be bad luck at this point. Jeremy McGrath coming off his first DNF of his career that we can remember. And that put him behind the eight ball as far as the points are concerned. So it's all uphill now for Jeremy McGrath, showing a lot of character and courage, coming toward the checkered flag with Emig on his tail. Toward the finish. Good tight cut by Jeremy McGrath, holding onto the control of that machine. Here's the checkers coming up. Jeremy McGrath did what he had to do in the first moto. Gutsy ride. Where did that come from? Well, you know, it's crunch time, Davey, and uh, I mean, I've, I've been off the pace for the past two weeks, and finally I'm confident again, getting some good starts. Me and Jeff went in the corner, you know, close together, and I, I got him finally. You know, he's been whole shot in every race, and... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be running up front again. <laughs> Bro, I know you're not happy. Did that surprise you, Jeremy riding like that? Well, it's real bad when you get a bad start. I mean, I was second behind him, and I just got roosted the whole time, and uh, you know, only had about three tear-offs on it. It just didn't, it just didn't work the way that I planned. That's for sure. But, you know, but I felt real strong. I know I'm stronger than him at the end of the motos. And, you know, in the second moto, I'm just ready to just, you know, burn away from him. So I'm gonna, you know, you know, give it 110 percent that next moto. Part of it. He could help his teammate too if Emmick can get the win here, and Emmick and uh, Hughes would be second. That pushed Jeremy even further back. Okay, we're set to go, and it's off for Moto2. Who will get the whole shot this time around? Jeremy in great position on the inside. The points chase. McGrath with another hole shot. Emick mid-pack right now. He can get his points lead back right here. If things, unless, things, unless Emick puts on the ride of his life. Greg Albertine, though, is doing a pretty good job in second place, keeping the heat on Jeremy McGrath. Pressure him like this, those two are going to pull away. Boy, does this make an exciting situation for next week at Delmont, Pennsylvania. The final round, the championship is going to be decided there. Got a little more confidence and poise to take it all the way to the checkered flag. So I'm, he's feeling the heat from Albertine right now, but that's probably a good thing. That's going to help him get a bigger lead so he doesn't have to deal with Emick later on. Binghamton, New York. There's Jeff Emig trying to weed his way up through the pack. He's got Larry Ward, number six, in front of him. Going to the inside, he decided to come back out, not get involved there. Shot, though, may, he may not have. Trying to go around the outside. It works. Oh, boy, what a clean sweep that was by Emig on Bradshaw. Okay, you said you weren't nervous in the first moto. Are you nervous now? Yeah, it is getting there. Uh, got a bad start. He's coming up to the pack pretty good, but, you know, those guys got a lead on him. So, basically, right as of right now, it looks like third unless something happens to the front guys. But uh, it'll be a tight race for the last one anyway. No, even thank if, you. Even if you do, you don't let go of that thing. And right now, Jeff is just determined. There he makes the pass, finally. Good power move by Emig. Final round. If he could get to second place. And the way Jeremy's running, boy, every point counts. <laughs> That's for sure going into that final round. McGrath, Albertine, Ward, Emig is on our field summary. It's got to be frustrating for him. And now it's kind of a question whether he'll even remain at Yamaha next year. Jeff Emig makes the move on Larry Ward. So look out. Here comes Emmy. Hey, I don't think he's close enough right now, though. Emmy with the big leaping move to the outside. Goes to the berm, cuts to the inside. Oh, my goodness. Emmy gets by for settling around on the final lap. 
takes the checkers, and there is a happy young man. He did all he could do here this afternoon. The checkers for Jeremy is sixth sweep, is seventh overall. All right, Jeremy. You did what you had to do today, a 1-1. Yeah, you know, uh, got some starts today. I wasn't really nervous. I wasn't concerned. My, I uh, suppose my foot's good to go, you know. I, I rode strong in the moto. After Albie started fading back a little bit, I started uh, just kind of cruising out there. And, you know, those guys were catching me at the end. But, you know, Jeff made a crucial pass there at the end. So we're two points away. You know, it's only one moto, and we got two motos to go. So I'm glad I'm back on pace, that's for sure. You control your own destiny, and you're going into your favorite track of the circuit for the final round. Yeah, Steel City's, the, you know, the best track out there, as far as I'm concerned. Binghamton was great today, but uh, I always have good luck at Steel City. And uh, me and 1 800 Collect and Honda and all my teammates, and uh, I'll have my mechanic back. He had a baby this Friday, so congratulations to him. So, uh, you know, we'll be on, on fire next week. All right, man, you were like a real champ today. Thanks. That was a very important pass. Well, I think I had a good line going there all moto, and it was, you know, it was just so super tough to pass. And I just blew both my starts. It's just all there is to it, you know. Uh, you know, McGrath just got out front like he had to do, and. You know, I feel real fortunate that I'm still ahead in points considering that I don't think I had that good a day. But it just showed, you know, everybody was all pumped for me and they're like, you know, you got it in the bag, you got it in the bag and all this stuff. And it's not in the bag, you know, until the final moto. And, you know, but I rode as hard as I could today to get the points that I got and I'm real, real happy to be here. All right. Next week, the final round, it's a hard packed track. McGrath says it's his favorite track, but you've done well there too. Well, we'll just see whose favorite track it is when we're holding the number one plate. I don't think anyone said it any better. Jeff Emmy, quote, it's as good as it gets. The points leader, Jeff Emig, barely. Especially between these two riders. They have the majority of the whole shots between them. Jeff Emig, more successful later in the season. They're off for the first moto. Emig with a good cut to the inside. Emig will get the whole shot. Where is Jeremy? Get out of there. He just positioned himself perfect. Stayed just to the inside of Albertine and went down. Jeremy came out smelling like a rose there. Now the battle is set. Both those guys right together. I don't think they're going to get a challenge from behind. Uh, they, they got too much business. This to do. championship of an attitude would not be able to hold a lead like this with the dominant Jeremy McGrath right behind it. Well, I think that's the key, though. It's in years past. Lately, Jeff has the confidence. He doesn't worry about what's going on behind him, although today is a little bit different situation. You can bet he's really nervous, but he's got the start he needs. Pressure's on Jeremy right now. He's the one that's behind. He's the one that's got to find a way around to hopefully pick up a one-point lead going to that second moto. Emmy trying to hold his own as we go to the helicopter shot to see the lines. Jeremy McGrath to the inside has the edge, and oh my goodness already, Jeremy has made the break himself. Here comes Emmy right back again. Can he resecure the lead? Oh, he almost lost it right there as his toe caught and went back with old moto. You wear him down. He's done it before, but I think that was a significant move right there. Jeremy caught him, passed him, probably figured, okay, now I'm in control. Laughter last week, won both motos, going away, but Emig is here to fight. Got him right back, and that mess with your confidence. Boy, a battle of the minds underway, as well as a battle on the track with Jeff Emig and Jeremy McGrath. Now the two are significantly pulling away from the third place rider. And that's going to do a lot for Jeff Emig's confidence, too. What a relief. A little mistake there by Jeremy, too. Uh, to get passed by Jeremy, then to pass him right back and reestablish the lead, and then to look over your shoulder, see that you got a little gap now. That's going to help. Jeff Emig, our leader. But it doesn't take long for number one to come in the picture. Jeremy's actually closed that gap back up just a little bit. He had that one spot on the track where Emig was leaving the door wide open. In fact, that's the corner right there coming in. Jeff comes in nice and tight. Jeremy squares it, cuts across the ruts. Starting to try a little different lines here and there now and actually close the gap back up, keeping the pressure on Emig. That's what he's got to do. There's a long time left to go in this moto, so he's, he's not in bad shape just yet, but coming down to the wire, he's going to need a lot, be a lot closer than this. Norfolk to see about the McGrath strategy. All right, Skip. Not a lot of lap riders here at Steel City. Is Jeremy worried about that? Well, no, you know, if you're out front, that's good for you. But if you're in second where we're at, you're kind of wishing to have some guys out there to race and slow things up and take the leader off his pace. But this way, it's racing. You know, the best guy's going to obviously win here this moto, barring anything weird happening. We're down to I have five, maybe six laps. They're pretty close on time. So it's going to have to happen now or it won't happen at all. Jeff Emig on the final lap. It's not that easy an item to win back-to-back -back 250 titles. 
In fact, it hasn't been done since Jeff Stanton in 1989 and 1990. That's what Jeremy McGrath is gunning for. He wants that number one plate back. He's going to have to do it in the second moto, it looks like. Go to Jeremy with the most wins on the season. Only a short period of time now before Jeff Emig turns that corner and sees the checkered flag. Very popular here at the Delmont track. Jeff Emig has won the first moto. The first round of the chess match is over. You beat him. Uh, it feels real good. You know, we were going fast. Just trying to keep my lines and uh, learn new ones along the way. So, you know, because I knew that he'd be out to get me there on that first lap, and he did. Unfortunately, I got him right back. Yeah, we saw that. That was a really close, and you almost land on him off that jump. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, where neither one of us is going to give up. And, you know, if we happen to come together, well, you know, then that's just part of racing, I guess. Now, for the second moto, you still got to get second if Jeremy wins. Do you feel up to it? Sure. We, well, I feel like winning. That's what I came here today. You know, the only way to guarantee this championship is to win both motos, and that's what I plan to do. It's just about as perfect as a race as anyone could ride, but it wasn't perfect enough. Yeah, it's true. Um, you know, Jeff got out in front. I got right behind him. I passed him first lap, or actually maybe it was the second lap, and and he kind of, like, cycled back by me. So then I was behind him. I, you know, I, was, I rode a good race. I was pushing as hard as I could without being erratic and making too many mistakes. It's just he wasn't making any mistakes either. So, um, you know, it's just uh, one of those things. I mean, I, I was trying my hardest, and he was trying his hardest, and that's how it goes. The bike's revving up, getting ready to go here for moto number two now for the 250s. They're off. The all-important hole shot. Look at the acceleration on the inside by Emig, and he breaks just in time for the hole shot. Where's Jeremy McGrath? Nightmare for McGrath right now. Emig out in front. Jeremy's somewhere maybe 10th, 15th, as best I can tell. Emig, Henry, Albertine, Taylor, Keeney, Bradshaw, Palmer, the school privateer winner, Palmer, they're all ahead of number one. Last moto of the day, and it's the driest, and all these guys are going to kick up some dust, and Jeremy's going to barely be able to see. Henry and then Larry Ward, second and third right. See, it's, it's easier for us than it is when you're out there. Uh, Battling with Corey Keeney right now. And you can see the roost, a great camera shot there. Right, and while he's trying to fight his way through these guys, Emick's pulling away. So Emick just go by the other way. That's a big lead. We figure these guys are pretty much even today. How the heck's he going to make that up? More riders that say faster riders? Well, as long as he's moving past them like this, it's not a problem. And that's why you see him so desperate trying to get by these guys early. Because later in the race, yes, they can slow you down a little bit because their pace is slower. And if you're behind him in a section like this, where Jeremy's capable of going a lot faster, you got to just sit there and wait. You're in I'm not going to tell him where McGrath is. He just wants to win this race, and I want him to win this race. He's been working really hard, and he wants his championship, and he knows what he has to do, and I don't think it matters where McGrath is. Otherwise, so far, so good, then. So far, so good. Thanks, Area. Jeremy's definitely got the pressure on. You can see how far away Albertine, he's already heading up the hill now. Here goes Jeremy now. He's got the clean drag strip uh, move on Doug Henry. Steel City, Delmont, Pennsylvania. Our leader is Jeff Emmy. If he holds on to the lead, he wins the 250 title for the season. If he places second, he still has assured himself of a victory. Yeah. Jeremy McGrath in third place, trying to battle up, trying to get closer to Albertine, who just went by, Skip Norfolk, pointing at Greg Albertine, saying, go, Odo, as Jeff Emmy comes around the finish line, getting the white flag for the final lap. Albertine has really pushed Emmy in second place. Jeremy McGrath has been unable to really mount a terrific opportunity against Albertine. Well, he's done all that he can do. You've seen him close the gap. He charged hard, and he... He came from a terrible start, but uh, you can see a little bit of celebration already going on in the Kawasaki pits. I don't know if I'd pat on the back yet. The shot as the turns are winding down to very few now for Jeff Emig as he heads toward the finish line. What a proud moment it has to be for this young man and for the entire Team Kawasaki. Yes, he's saying to himself, I did do it. Greg Albertine off to his right, congratulating him and his many fans. He's just exploding inside. All right, we're down here in the winner's circle at the 1996 250 National Champion, Jeff Emmett. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I, um, you know, I couldn't have done it without my mechanic, Jeremy Albrecht, and my team, Kawasaki. Um, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. You know, we had a, we got a lot of seconds this year, and um, 
you know, you know, coming into this race, second wasn't going to be good enough. And I was really focused on my starts and just riding uh, perfect races. And I, I mean, I can't tell you just how happy I am right now. I mean, I mean, like it hasn't soaked in yet, but I, I mean, I, I just feel so good. Well, those were two totally perfect races. A lot of times, like in the Supercross Series and early in the National Series, you'd have trouble with McGrath behind you. No problem today, either moto. Well, you know, Jeremy's been, you know, he's been great, you know, the last four or five years. And, and his Supercross skills, you know, are just, uh, you know, they're just super. But, uh, you know, I got a lot of seconds this year, like I said, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I just knew that I had to come out and just win the motos. So. Are you stoked to have your dad here watching you? Yeah, I'd like to say hi to you know, you know, my dad, sister, and everybody else, my brother at home, and, uh, you, know, you know, my trainer, John Hall. There's a lot of people that are involved, you know, like in winning a, you know, a national championship like this, and, you know, like the list is long, but, you know, but you all know who you are, and I thank you so much. You sound like a champion. You gave it all you had. Yeah, I was just, uh, didn't get to start again, and I was back that time. Jeff did one of his classic moves, you know, cut over on me. But uh, he rode a great race. He did what he had to do. I came out here, and, you know, I have no regrets. I, I was at home doing what I had to do and making sure that I had no regrets after today if I didn't win, and that's just the way it works out. How would things have been different without the injury? Well, it would have been much different. You know, I had a 50-point lead. That's a whole race. Um, believe me, I've learned my lesson from that, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, in the previous years, that won't happen. A quick look back at the most fierce rivalry in a great 1996 season. Jeremy McGrath started off dominating and then at Millville. That's obvious from Jeremy's comment that the season would have been completely different had he not had that injury. However, that's part of racing, and Jeff Emig took advantage of it. Then his first DNF at Washougal, trying to come back and get back into the picture. Looked like it was all over right here, but he did come back to Binghamton and win both motos, giving himself a mathematical shot at the final round. Kudos to the new champion, Jeff Emig. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs saying thanks to you fans for another great season of motocross.